Jojo Rabbit. This is the latest film from director Takiya Watiti, and it stars Roman Griffin Davis, Thomason McKenzie, Scarlett Johansson, and Sam Rockwell. And we're going to talk about this interesting film on my next conservative take. Make sure you stick around because you're going to hear what I got to say about that. My name is Kyle, and if you're unfamiliar with the way I do my movie reviews, please click the link above and that will explain everything. As always, there will be a spoiler section, which I will get deep into spoilers, especially on this review. And so if you don't want to know, make sure you skip over that part. So at the heart of everything, the film Jojo Rabbit is a charming film, which is disguised as a coming of age film, disguised as a black comedy, disguised as a war film, and disguised as a can we please just get along film. And all that said, you may think this may not be the film for me, I kind of know where this film is going. Well stick around, I think you might be surprised with this review. However, there are some things you need to be concerned about which I will talk about in my conservative take. Now the film stars a 10 year old kid named Jojo. Okay, He lives with his mom Rosie who is played by Scarlett Johansson. They live in Germany toward the later end of World War II. Jojo has a vivid imagination and he imagines his friend is Hitler. Okay, And Hitler acts very immaturish but he wants to be the best German possible so he goes to a camp with other kids and they're being indoctrinated into the Nazi culture and ideology and training and all of this. And so something happens where he gets injured and that sends him out of that camp back into civilian life because he's no longer can function. His leg got hurt and his face is scarred and people tease him. They call him Jojo Rabbit because he wouldn't kill a rabbit. Okay, that's why they called him that. And so that was his nickname. Anyway, long story short, he finds out that his mom is actually harboring a Jewish girl and he didn't realize his mother was a revolutionary and a sympathizer for the Jewish state and for the Jewish people. And so there's that conflict where he's hardcore Germany, doesn't quite understand what's going on in the world, doesn't understand quite how bad Hitler is, and doesn't quite understand who Jews are. He thinks they're evil people. And so he is fully into that indoctrination of that philosophy. And so that's the ebb and flow of that. And you can kind of figure out where things go from there. Uh, so the film is really a, a charming film, I must say, and I really enjoyed it. There are some things about it I don't care for. I think there are some parts of it where I think it went too far in the joking sphere of it. And I think they tried to really, in some ways, jump the shark on some things. And at the end of the movie, I don't think they really did a really good job of really paying everything off the way they should have. And I think it's worthy of being a best picture film. So for the category of story, I'm going to give Jojo Rabbit an 8. The reason why I'm going to give it an 8 is what other films in this particular category haven't had so far this year and that is a twist. Something that's going to shock you and take you in a direction that I feel is creative and innovative and thought provoking. This film definitely has that. The story has a full arc around the way. The characters have a full arc and I think it's really really good. Some things are too much on the nose. Overall I think an 8 is adequate and I think that's one of the strongest parts of this film. For emotional impact, I'm going to give this film a 7. Now, it's a film dealing with Nazis. It has a film dealing with the oppression of the Jews. And so there's going to be some inherent emotion in that. I must say that the director tones all of that down. He doesn't throw it in your face because this film is really a comedy in a lot of ways. It's satire. And I think he would have stepped outside of himself and outside of the intention of the film had he done that so you don't see any bloodshed but you do know stuff's going on people who are being killed you don't see their faces and so that kind of dumbs down the emotion part of it but it's still there and there's a part in here that I thought was actually pretty charming as well that I will mention in the spoiler section for the intangibles for this film I'm gonna give it a seven for various reasons I'm gonna give it that because a couple songs they use were really really well done you'll see what I'm talking about when you first watch it and I wish they had done more of that. I thought Scarlett Johansson's portrayal of Rosie, the mother of Jojo, was just so charming and sweet. And it was just really one of the best things of this film. I wish I had seen more of her in this. And also, you're also going to think I'm, I'm weird. The, the color choices on this, the color palette on this was bright. It was 
fun, it was whimsical, and it does the film justice in terms of what they're trying to get across. And I thought the appearances of Hitler as the imaginary friend and his humor and the wit in there was pretty, pretty, pretty funny. So all of that together, I really could probably give this an eight, but I'm not. <laughs> However, I really did enjoy these aspects of the film. So the category of watchability, I'm going to give this film an eight. And what I failed to mention in the last section of Intangibles is that the scene where the director, Takiya Watiti, he plays Adolf Hitler in the mind of Jojo, the 10 year old child. And he goes off on a very serious rendition of Hitler at his speech. And I'll tell you one thing, this rendition or this performance was haunting because we're used to seeing images of Hitler doing his speeches in black and white behind the podium and grainy footage. But this is 4K color and you see it and it's like, wow, this performance really, really, really was good. And I should have considered that in the intangible section as well. But the main point of why this is a watchability of eight is because it never lets up. It catches your attention from the very beginning. You get to like this character, Jojo, and his associations with the people around him and his friends and the story just gets more and more compelling and there's one scene which, which has high 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 tension you know where this thing is going to go and you see all this through this kid's eyes and you see his arc his story from this kid who is a total pro germany pro nazi and you just see where his journey goes it's really really believable and because you're wondering how's he going to get there because he's so hardcore but anyway the watchability is great, and I think the only problem I have with it is toward the end, where I believe the film kind of falls on its own weight. But other than that, it's pretty good. And so for my overall rating, I'm going to give this film a 7. It's solid, it has good development, good arcs, good narration, keeps you engaged, has a good message, and I'll mention some more things in the conservative take. So now we're on to my conservative take and be mindful of some spoilers that may be coming ahead. And so for this film, I'm going to give it a go because on the surface, there's nothing really offensive for a person like me who would watch this and feel that Hollywood's trying to preach to me their social justice narrative and agenda. You don't see that on the surface if you just watch it for the first time in. But as you watch it, I kept thinking some things. I'm like, you know what? I think they're trying to tell me something and I don't know. So I'm going to bring that out. And if you think that I'm tripping on that, please leave a comment below and let me know. I'd be curious to know what you think. So, but before I get to that, let's talk about the emotional part that I mentioned before that I didn't want to talk about then because of the spoiler aspect of it. And simply this, Rosie, who is Jojo's mother, dies. She is hanged publicly. Now you don't see it, you see her feet, but one of the pieces of symbolism that this film does over and over and over again is Jojo's shoes are never tied and his mom's always tying his shoes and so we see her shoes hanging from the town square from a gallo and they go up to that and he hugs the feet he ties her shoes and it's like come on really that's pretty touching but again I said before some things were on the nose that was one of them another one was at the end of the film where they are realizing that the war is over and now the person who has been hidden away in the house by Jojo's mom is now free to go and she had said before in the past that the first thing she would do once she was was free she would dance and so they're standing outside in the street American flags are waving because Hitler has killed himself the war is over and now she realizes she's free so they go into this little dance it's really awkward he starts she starts and it's like they're about I don't know four feet from each other and they're kind of doing this weird dance and then eventually it goes into some little 60s hippies kind of kind of deal whatever it's really really weird into the part that i really want to talk about for the conservative take here is this we're dealing with fascism right we're dealing with nazis and i know what you think i'm going to say that's exactly what i'm going to say when you look at today who is being called the nazis who's being called the fascists we're looking at people like the trump supporters people who support the republican party they're being called the fascists and here's the deal they aren't the fascists. People who want to restrict speech, burn books, which they do in this movie, 
who want to hunt people down and kill them, restrict their access to firearms. Those are people who want a totalitarian government in charge. I have yet to see one Republican or one conservative or one Trump supporter who wants the government in control of everything. So before you give me this stuff about fascism being the Republican Party or the Trump supporters, you know, let's talk about who the fascists really, really were. And as I'm looking at these Nazis in this film, you almost see that the Jewish people are really the ones who are being the ones who are obviously they're the non-fascists, right? But they're being treated as if, well, I hate to say this, they're being treated like Trump supporters. And I'm not trying to say that Trump supporters are being put into gas chambers or anything like that. I'm not saying that. Don't I'm not tripping like that. No. What I'm saying is is that they're the ones that are being looked at as evil. Okay? If you look at people today, if you look at groups like Antifa, all right, if you have a red hat on, you can get beat down, you know, because hey, you know, they attribute that Nazi fascist symbol onto a group that they don't like so they can go after that group. It has nothing to do with whether or not they attribute those attributes to that group. It's so that they can put a group that we can all agree on is evil. We all hate the Nazis. We all hate Hitler. And so if you can attribute that universal feeling onto a group that you don't like, then all of a sudden we can go after that group. And that's exactly what's going on in this movie. And I'm not sure if they're trying to say anything, but I believe that's what they feel. And here's the irony, it's actually the reverse. And so that's my thoughts on that. So I don't believe it was a direct put on by the director, but I do feel that it is an underlying narrative that's in there, that's under the surface. That if you don't, if you're not careful to see that, you will see it. And at the end, you have the whole thing with the dancing, the hippie thing, which kind of ties into this being a hippie kind of cross culture thing. And you're dealing with stuff, hippie music in the beginning of the movie with Beatles music going on in the beginning. And so they're giving this like a 60s vibe on top of a mid 20th century film during World War II. So they kind of conflate those two cultures together. And I think they're trying to say something there that I don't think is quite accurate or even appropriate. So, and if you look at the poster too, the peace symbol in there, that's obviously a throwback to the hippies as well. Even though I will say, I know V is also used for the peace symbol too for victory, but I don't believe that that's how they were using it. Maybe it's a double entendre. I don't know. But again, if I'm reading too much into this, let me know. I'm be really curious about that. And so for my final rating, this film comes out to a 14.5, which translates to three stars out of four. And this is a wonderful film. I don't have too many flaws with it other than the ending being a little bit hokey and a little bit on the nose and not satisfying. But, and the things I mentioned in the conservative take, which to me, doesn't take away from the film because I don't believe that was the director's intention, at least directly, which I can appreciate. But here's the question. What do you think? Was I tripping on my analysis and my conservative take? Let me know in the comments, please. And do you plan on seeing Jojo Rabbit? You know, I'm just curious because I found it really entertaining. And let me know if you thought the opposite. And if you like the content on this channel where I take culture, TV, and movies and filter it right, please hit that like and subscribe button and that bell icon so you don't miss any future content. And please share with your friends. And also, as always, check out some content that I have right here.